Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus 38. And he made the altar of burnt offering. Now we're going to the entrance and working our way east to west. When we were in the tabernacle, the tent, we went from west to east, starting with the mercy seat. Offering of shit of wood. Five cubits was the length thereof, and five cubits was the breadth thereof. It was four square and three cubits the height thereof. We're going back to Exodus 27. <clears throat> he made the horns. Now this is where you would tie the animal up. You walk the animal there. You take the strap and tie him here. Thereof on the four corners of it. The horns thereof were of the same. And he overlaid them with brass. Judgment. No gold here. No silver. This burnt offering the altar represents hell and judgment, the wrath of God. And he made all the vessels of the altar, the pots. You want to think, you know, here's the saying, you know, pots and shovels and the basins. This would collect the blood and the flesh hooks and the fire bands. All the vessels thereof made he of brass. He made for the altar a brazen gate, great. This is that network of network under the compass, thereof beneath unto the midst of it. And this altar is hollow. And inside that altar goes this great. This great is the same level as the table and as the mercy seat. A cubic and a half, I believe. He cast four rings for the four ends of the great uh, bass to be places for the stage. They don't be, have to be carried. You're not going to touch these things. He made the staves of shittim wood and overlaid them with brass. And he put the staves into the rings to the sides of the altar to bear it with all. And he made the altar hollow and hollow inside with boards. He made a labor of brass, and this is judgment. This labor has no measurements mentioned at all. Now the candlestick did not give us a weight, I mean did not give us a height, length, and width. It gave us a talent. But of all the articles where they wash, this one has no size at all. Now when we get to Solomon's later on, he's going to tell us how much it held. Of the looking glasses, this would be the mirrors. Of the women assembly. So this here, for this brazen altar, you have the sacrifice of the women. And what they had for mirrors was they had brass, and it was polished so bright that it would act like a mirror. These women gave their looking glasses to God to make this brazen labor that will withhold water. And when you look at a water, what do you usually see? You're going to see a reflection. And when a Christian looks in that labor of breath, it's not to be baptized. It's to see yourself in the water, in the looking glasses of these women, to say who I am and what needs to be washed. 1 Corinthians 13, 12.
this this labor does not fit your baptism. It never has. It never. You'll never see a priest jump in this thing and immerse himself. Now he may sprinkle himself to get clean, but that's not the mode of baptism. Thirteen twelve. Scripture with scripture. It's a wonderful picture. You could spend your entire life in ministry preaching about the tabernacle. Forget there was a man who preached. I forget which book of the Bible. I think it was a chapter. He spent his whole ministry preaching about it. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face now I know in part. But then shall I know even as I am known. And what Paul's saying, listen, until you come to Christ, you can look in the mirror all you want and see that face. As a Christian, I look in that mirror and I say, you know what? You know who causes all your trouble? And you point at yourself in that mirror and it points right back at you. You're the source of your troubles. It's not your mama. It's not your grandma. It's not your great-grandparents. You sin. And like you look in the mirror and say, oh, look, at I got this little pimple here. I need to get rid of it. You're going to look at that mirror of this labor and say, there's a lie there. I need to get rid of that lie. I need to be washed with the word. I need to be clean. James 1.22. James 1.22. It says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. How about that priest walked up there, that labor, that has the attention of washing? I don't need it. Looks pretty. It's a mirror. The water reflects. No baptism. Now we get with the court. We saw this in Exodus 27. And he made the court. See, we've been building it now. 37 to 38, it's being built. On the south side, the hangings of the court were a fine twine linen, a hundred cubits. Their pillars were twenty. So, if you take a hundred divided by twenty, there were five. Five pillars. And their brass sockets, twenty. So, twenty pillars. They would be five cubits. That's what it is. Five cubits. Uh, in space from each other. And the brazen socket 20, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. Redemption. The gold, the silver, and the brass are all placed precisely in this tabernacle in man's relation to God. And for the north side, the hangings were 100 cubits, their pillars were 20, and their sockets of brass 20, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver. And for the west side were hangings of 50 cubits. Their pillars 10, so they would still be 5. The pillars would be 5 cubits space. Their pillars 10. And the sockets, that's what would go into the ground. 10, the hooks of the pillars and the fillets of silver. And for the east side, eastward, 50 cubits. This would be the gate. The hangings on the one side of the gate were 15 cubits, and their pillars 3, and their sockets 3. On the other side of the court gate, on the hand that, on this hand and on that hand, were hangings of 15 cubits, their pillars 3, and their sockets 3. So, you would, you would turn the corner on the east side, they would turn in 15 cubits on this side, and they turn in on 15 cubits on that side, and stop. There'll be a doorway. And in that doorway you'll have a veil. The hangings of court round about were fine twine linen. And the sockets for the pillars were brass. Here's brass. This is where you come in. This is where they brought their offering. This is where they would judge themselves. I must bring a lamb. I must bring an ox. I must bring turtle doves. 
and hoofs of the pillars in their fillets of silver, and they and the overlaying of the chapters, that's the top, of silver. And all the pillars of the court were filled with silver. And the hanging for the gate of the court was needlework of blue and purple and scarlet and fine tiny linen. This is what the gate the people would walk up to. And the height in the breadth was five cubits. Ansible to the hangings of the court. The same measurements, height. And the pillars were four, and their sockets of brass four, their hoops of silver. He said, why do you got brass and you got silver? Whatever touches that ground, brass, man, man came from dirt. That's brass. What's free-flowing kind of in the air? Silver. And overlaying their chapters and their fillets of silver. And all the pins of the tabernacle and of the court round about were of brass. Judgment. It's something that sticks. Now this is the sum of the tabernacle. Even of the tabernacle of the testimony, as it was counted. According to the commandment of Moses, for the service of the Levites, by the hand of Ithamar, son to Aaron, the priest. And Bezeel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made all that the Lord commanded Moses. And with him was Aholib, the son of Ashamach, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver. That's something we didn't learn before. This guy uh, has already been in the job of engraving. And a cunning workman, and an embroiderer, that's doing things by needle graph in blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen. So I would assume that Holy Book was pointing to more the engravings and to the needlework. By that statement, by I'm assuming. All the gold that was occupied for the work of all the work of the holy place, even the gold of the offering, was twenty and nine talents and seven hundred and thirty shekels. So, try to raise again. So, and after the shekel, the sanctuary. It's a price. It's the weight of gold. And the silver of them that were numbered in the congregation was a hundred talents, and a thousand seven hundred and three score and fifteen talents. After the shekel of the sanctuary. So God is telling us how much gold, how much silver. If you don't think God is a record keeper, we read a couple chapters ago, hey, Moses, you got to stop it. We got too much. Tell him to stop giving. And God records what everybody has given. He records in the book of Numbers. You better believe God is counting how much uh, paper money you're giving and how much metal coins you're giving. Better make sure that God's doing that of your life. The heavenly books of your name in heaven are being recorded. You better read the Bible. A bika for every man that is half a shekel. After the shekel of the sanctuary, for everyone that went to be numbered from 20 years old and upward, for 600,000 and 3,550 men, and they had to pay their price, redemption. A hundred talents of silver were cast, the sockets of the sanctuary, and the sockets of the veil. A hundred sockets of the, of the hundred talents, a talent for a socket. God is recording your talents and exactly what you do with your talents and where your talents go. Again, silver represents redemption. And those silver sockets are recorded here 
are remade are made by the redemption money of the children of Israel. That money they paid to be redeemed went into those sockets. You say, well, what would that be today? That'd be like, you know, you buy a brick and they put it in the ground and it has your name or whatever you want to put on it. That's what that is. Those sockets stand for the price of redemption that they paid to the Levites for service. And the brass. You see, gold, silver, socket, brass, God records it all. The brass of the offering was 70 talents and 2,400 shekels. So, there's your brass given in. And therewith he made the sockets to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and the brazen altar and the brazen gate for it and all the vessels of the altar. God not only records what you gave, he records what was done with it. Be advised, church leaders. Let me, let me put this to the church leader. When your congregation gives money to God, God records what they give. Whether it's a tithe, whether they give grudgingly, or they give cheerfully, whatever. God records your congregation giving money. And God records what you do with that money, whether it be for God or for the world. Every penny that you get into your church offering, God looks at that and he says, all right, for a brass offering, there was 70 talents and 2,400 shekels. That's how much your congregation gave. Now, what'd you do with it? There would be made the sockets to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, the brazen altar, the brazen gate for it, and all the vessels of the altar. You better give that money to God and not to the world. God will record it. And the sockets of the court round about, and the sockets of the court gate, and all the pins of the tabernacle, and all the pins of the court round about. Phew. The tabernacle is made. It's finished. Lord willing, next chapter, we're going to get into the clothes of the priests.